Hi, I'm Dr. Saab, and today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the main controls of this 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300D 4Matic Premium Plus. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the main features. If you haven't done so already, check out part one, focuses on what some of the main functions that the driver needs to know. Watch that video first, click on the link on the top right corner, or click the link in the description below. This video is perfect if you've just bought the new GLC, or if you're thinking about buying one. Don't worry, you'll not need to memorize everything I say, because I have made a summary sheet of what features the car has. Please check out the link in the description below. And please check out my other really useful videos in the GLC playlist to learn more about this incredible car. I wanted to say a big thank you to Lucas Mercedes-Benz Wolverhampton for making this video possible. Something very useful, a very cool feature. If I go to comfort, position seat automatically. Now, if I put in my height, let's go with five, six, click on start positioning. Now the seats and the steering wheel will adjust to my driving position. How cool is that? And this is the recommended driving position for my height. That is really, really cool. So that's how you use the position seat automatically system. And then if I press the home button, it takes me back to the main screen. Now I have done a separate video on how to connect your phone and the zero layer system. It automatically knows I should connect my phone to the car. So it's giving me that prompt on this tile. Now this is the great thing about zero layer. It will prompt suggestions on things that you may like or you like to do. So the car has got a basic AI in there where it will learn on things that you like on particular times. So if you like to have a particular radio station at a particular time in the morning and then in, when you finish for work you may want a particular radio station for the afternoon. You've got that suggestion that will come up in the tiles here, which is really, really useful. So that's what zero layer does. And you can change the layout to a different layout if you want to. So you can customize the layout screens if you want that one or that one. That's a more traditional kind of style. You can have this one, which is the zero layer. And then what it does is it allows you to have a dock, basically. The dock will provide suggestions such as what you want to listen to, such as the radio, or even who to call. Now you can remove suggestions such as swiping up, which is quite useful. I'm just going to switch the car on. So push the brake, press the start switch. Now to use the temperature controls, all you do is touch the screen. Up and down changes the temperature. If I need to increase, I can press from one side. I can change the side on my side as well. Now what I tend to do is just leave the car in auto to let the car figure itself out. So you can select the auto options here. Now, if you don't want to use the auto feature, that's fine. You can you control it manually. This button is for the front screen for the front windscreen. This one's for the rear, for your heated and front windscreens. You got this button here, any smelly air in the car, maybe behind a truck or something like that. You can press this button and it'll try and get rid of that smelly air for you. Click, press the climate menu button. That then allows me to choose where I want the fans to distribute the air. But I just prefer to use the auto function to let the air distribute how it wants to and how much to as well and I find that, that when I do that I get a less demisted screen so I think that's a really useful feature now one thing I like to do is have the temperature at 22 degrees so I'll just set the 22 degrees and you can see when I, I can mess around with this and switch it on and off if I need to let's see I want it at 22 degrees all I'll do is hold the climate menu button and you can see now the temperatures have set to 22 degrees on both sides. So now the air will distribute at 22 degrees. If I need, to, if I want it to be the same on that side and a slightly different side, I can. But if I want it all the same temperature, 
just hold the climate menu button you can see the sync buttons on if I unsync it if I press the sync button that also sets it back to 22 degrees which is what I want I can also select the second row of seats and I can control the air distribution there as well if I press the home button it takes me back to the home screen next I want to show you the radio now you can see it's already prompted me for radio if I need to and I can skip it here if I need to but if I select that got a bigger window and now I can change the radio stations if I need to. If you want to get to the radio screen a slightly different way you can press the home button and then select radio and now I've got all the radio stations here. I can then select the radio by moving these tiles or I can use the list here and choose the relevant radio station that I want. Uh, let's say I click on that one, that's now on. If I select the three lines again, you can see there's a star here. And the star allows me to make my own favorites list. So if I click on the star, that's now saved as a favorite. And you can see I can also choose different sources. So if I want FM or DAB, I can select that. You can see if I select those three, go into my favorites, they've popped into my favorites. And then if I want to get rid of a favorite, just click the three dots there. I can change the position if I need to. I can change the positions of the radio stations. Or I can just click the bin button here, that'll delete it. And if I want to get rid of this one, just click the three dots, delete entry. Click the three dots, delete entry. And then if I go back to FM, I can set it as a favorite by just clicking the star. There you go, that's saved as a favorite. Can change the stations down here as well. Press the home button and I'm done. Press this button, that takes me back to the radio two that I wanted. And I can change the radio here as well. I can get some more information here, can I? That should pop up there. If I want to play something from the USB, I can connect through Bluetooth. I can choose sources as well. So if I want to listen to the radio again, I can. I can connect Apple CarPlay, it can be wirelessly connected. And check out my video in the description to see how to connect to Apple CarPlay and how to use those features as well. Now a radio announcement has come up. That could be for the traffic. The radio announcements, that can switch that off as well by clicking the cog here. That allows me to change some different things. But let's go back to radio. Uh, if I press this button, it just stops those messages coming up from my traffic. So that's very useful. Can search for other radios as well. Can customize the settings. And I can change what I want to see on the radio as well. So radio announcements switched off now. Information automatically fix itself. That's quite useful if you're traveling from south to north. You'll pick up the best radio station in that area for that particular channel. And if I click that symbol there, I can change the sound settings to 3D sound. Now pure is more of a concert kind of feel. So the speakers will sound like they're coming from the front. 3D sound will be a more immersive sound. So it depends on what you prefer. And this is only available if you have the Burmester option. So if your car's got the silver speakers, that's perfect. Equalizer, I can change the bass and the mid and the treble if I need to. And then balance and fader. This is really, really useful. Now I use this feature quite a lot especially on long journeys. I let my daughter sit at the back and she has her iPad. Me and my wife at the front can listen to our music to a reasonable volume. But once you want everyone to listen to the same volume, just put it back into the center like that. When it's zero, zero, that's when it's perfect balance. You can have the sound to the front, to the front passenger side, front driver side, by just using the little our little dot there which is quite useful 
Now if you find fiddling with the little dot is a bit annoying, you can click the reset button. Then the sound of the speakers will be in the center. You can click the reset button and that'll take you back to the center. Sound focus, that's very useful as well. You can customize where you want the sound to focus at. That's pretty cool. I'll probably just leave that like that. Loudness, normalization. And you can set how loud you want it as well. FM DAB and then back to the DAB's FM radio settings. That's very cool. Now if you do connect to Apple CarPlay, you'll find that here. You can customize the tiles. So if you want this tile to be on this screen, you can. You can see I've just moved it there. Click on it. That's saved that now. So there you go. So you can customize the tiles if you need to. Now if you click on media, you can connect a Bluetooth device to this if you want to. You can do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Apple CarPlay is wireless for the first time for the GLC Coupe, which is lovely. You can connect a USB as well if you want to. Again, you can change the settings of the sound here as well. And now, I'll show you that. Now, next thing I want to show you is the ambient lighting. So, press the home button, go to comfort, click on ambient light. And now I've got 64 different colors to choose from and you can choose any color here which is quite cool and so if i go for red and then click on brightness i can change the brightness if i want to i can change the effects if i need to i can set it to multi-chrome so if i want different colors i can do that as well let's just stick with the monochrome can't really see that properly in the so much light you can see if i change that to blue on the center area also on the door on that side. To show this off, you really need to see this in the night. Maybe in the future I could get my hands on one to see what it's like to live with in the night. To change the ambient lights, sometimes I just say, hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Change the ambient lights to purple. Okay, I'm changing the color. How cool is that? So you can just tell the car exactly what kind of color you would like. Now I've shown you these two and what this does, smartphone app. If I click on off-road app, this allows me to see some off-road information. So you've got a very useful, cool display here. If I click this button, that allows me to see what's in front of me. So if I drive now, you can see, it builds a picture of what you can see underneath the front bonnet. How cool is that? You can switch off the traction control, you can switch off the parking sensors from here. If you click that, that puts the car into manual mode. So when you're driving, you will have to change your gears manually using the paddle shifts on the steering wheel. They feel like metal, which is nice. DSR is very useful if you're going down a hill. So that's your off-road features if you want to use it. So I've shown you all the main apps down here. You've got apps on the top left corner. That shows you what Mercedes Me is. Now Mercedes Me is really, really useful. And I'll explain that a bit more about how useful it is a bit later. Uh, comfort I've already shown you. Where you can change the ambient lights. Seat connecting is really useful as well. So if you're on a long journey, this could be really useful because you can set the seat to move slightly. And what that does is, when you go on a long journey, the seat will adjust accordingly, just to make sure that your body's basically moving enough. So when you finish the long journey, you shouldn't be as tired. Just press the play button to use this feature. We've also got the settings app. Give that a click. And here we can change all the main settings of the car. So I can change the collision avoidance. Uh, ESP might be really useful if you're on slippery roads. I tend to keep it on and then switch it off if I need to. Usually the car can figure itself out on how to get you, give you the most traction, but you can switch it off if you need to. 
Active Brake Assist. Now, I would actually have these systems on because they are designed to keep you safe. And if you were in an accident and you had them off, it could make your insurance void. So please be careful with that. The cog does allow you to change the settings. So you can change it to uh, early, medium or late. Now I would go with late uh, if you don't want these systems to actively kick in quickly. And then if I need to, again, I can set this to late. Uh, because it's not my car, I better change it back to medium in the original settings. And blind spot assist is really useful. You'll get a little warning in your mirrors, just telling you if there's any blind spots. Very useful. Now assistance, traffic sign assist. By pressing the mute button on the steering wheel, you can activate or deactivate the acoustic speed warning. You can activate and deactivate the speed warning system. You can just do that here. You can set it to audible as well if you need to. That might be useful. And then you can do traffic light view. Sometimes you can't see the traffic lights. The camera on the car will automatically come on so you can see the traffic lights on the screen. That's a very useful feature. Attention assist. This is very useful. On a long journey, the car will monitor how you're driving. And if you're not driving as well, because you're tired, it will suggest that you have a break. Trust me, this system works. Now, GPS-based activation, you can, let's say I've set this one, I can delete it, or I can rename it if I need to. But if I want to delete it, I can click on delete all activation positions, or I can just press the bin here to delete particular ones, click on yes, and that's now deleted. Open camera cover, this is really useful because it will open the camera cover, and now I can give it a quick clean if I need to. So I'll show you what that looks like now. There's the camera. It's useful, isn't it? Because the camera pops out, it should be much easier to keep it clean and a really useful feature, I think. Other manufacturers tend to not do that. And they, when the car gets dirty, your camera gets dirty. Now, parking, you can change the settings here. You can have that switched on and off. It just shows you where the parking is, set warning tones. You can adjust the tone, the volume. You can do the fade out as well. If you want these warnings to be early, you can do a side warning. Very useful. Maneuvering assistance. So you can have that set as well. Very cool. I'd have these systems on, but all depends on how you like to drive. I'm going to leave it off for now. If I've got a vehicle, that can change settings. Winter tire limit. Oh, very useful. You can set it so you just manually shift every time, but I would have that off. Let the car figure it itself out. That's quite useful. I think keep that on. Not sure why it's off. Maybe you might get a bit annoying if you like to use a particular petrol station. Maybe because of the prices. Car wash mode is very, very useful because this is really useful to use in a automatic car wash. So the electric mirrors will fold in, the windows will all close, and the sunroof. Parking sensors off, rain sensor will come off as well. So then the wipers don't come on automatically. Very useful. Just click on activate to use that. Comfort. I would actually use this feature. So steering wheel position will automatically raise. Now when I switch that off, seat position so it will move back. Just to allow me to get in and out a bit easy. I think that's a very useful feature. And then roof sun blind. If I press this, that will close the sun blind for me. Now, some people may want to use that. Now, I would recommend using that in the summer 
because in the summer, when the sun's out, having the blind closed will just keep the car a bit cooler. So open and close vehicle protection. If you do leave someone in the car, and maybe you've filled up your car, you've locked the car, and there's people in the car, the alarm will go off. So what you will need to do is make sure that the interior motion sensor is switched off before you press the lock alarm button and the alarm won't go off. Towway protection, that's really useful, keep that on, unless you're being towed away. Collision notification, now this is very useful. So through the app, you'll know if a collision has been detected and it'll save up to 15 photos. Photos can be also uploaded to Mercedes Me, very useful. And you can upload those collision photos to Mercedes Me if you want to. Just scan the QR code. Now, you can also uh, store a USB device to the car. You should be able to save those photos onto a storage device as well, I believe. It's no collisions, so there's nothing on here to show. I think you can do videos as well. Don't hold me to that. I'm sure you can. As long as a video is a USB is connected to the car, you should be able to see videos. As long as you've put a USB down here, you should be able to view those. Automatic locking, above 10 miles per hour, the doors will lock themselves. Now acoustic lock, I would actually keep that switched off only because if you want to disturb your neighbors, have that on. Because when you lock the car, the horn will go on. So that might be really annoying for your neighbors. I would keep that off, especially if you have a baby if all the neighbors have a baby, you don't want to disturb that baby sleep. Automatic mirror fold in. I actually like to have that on because when I lock the car, I know then the mirrors should close and I know the car's locked as a visual aid for me. Dynamic select allows me to change the driving settings. So you get the car to ask you when you start the car. This is for anyone that doesn't like to use the Eco Stop Start. Now, I would have that off, but you can change the driving mode to Sport. So that's where the gearbox will just hold the gear higher. Steering will be soft. I prefer that. Sport will just be heavier. And then ESP, you can have that to a more sporty version of the ESP. So it'll just give you less traction. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't recommend that sound. You could have a more sporty note if you wanted to by clicking on sport. Now you can change the dynamics of the car by pressing this button here. You can choose, see, I can choose from comfort, sport, individual, eco, or even off-road mode. Now if I activate that, you can see now I can only I can't go above 68 miles per hour when I'm going off-road. Interesting. Now, if you go to individual mode, click the cog at the top left corner, you'll be greeted to this screen again. And again, you can change the settings for that. Now, you might think, why do you need sport mode? Sport mode is really useful because if you're on a motorway, it could be a very useful option. It holds the gear longer when you're on the motorway and that means you should drink less fuel. So let me know in the comments how you find that. That was recommended to me by a Mercedes salesperson. You can leave the car in comfort when you're driving locally. And if you're in stop-stop traffic, then it may be worth using the eco mode and that'll just prevent the car using too much fuel. But as a warning, when you go into eco mode, the AC won't work as well. Um, because it's trying to be as more economical. Bound back to comfort, go back. And then you've got the lights option. This allows me to change the digital lights so I can do dynamic low beam. Uh, that is a very cool feature, welcome farewell projection. Now supporting projections, that's pretty cool. In certain situations, digital light projects additional information onto the road surface. How cool is that? 
can have the locator lighting, so I would have this on. Just shows you any puddles as well in the night. And then I would have a delay when the lights switch off in the interior. Uh, you can switch it off if you don't want to disturb certain people, maybe. And then you can set the delay switch off for off 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, or 60 seconds. And then the ambient lights, I've shown you this already. You can change the ambient lighting if you need to. Now, if I go to system, if you don't like using the Hey Mercedes function, you can switch it off. Maybe you like to say Hey Mercedes a lot or Mercedes. Then now you can see uh, the voice assistant doesn't assist. If I switch it back on, it will assist. I click the cog. You can see now only certain people can now say the special words. I don't want to say it because then it will uh, talk. Ah, and this is, these are some of the common functions that you can use. So you don't have to say, hey Mercedes for everything. You can say these particular things. That is pretty cool. So the dash cam recording, that is really useful. Make sure you've got your USB connected to this. You probably will need an adapter because it's USB-C. Most people still only have USB, so get a USB-C adapter if you want to use an old USB storage device. That's very cool. Now, you can do the online recognition if you want to. That's a very useful feature. If you have connected for a Bluetooth to your phone, to the car, it'll just prompt you to never forget your phone, which I think is a lifesaver. Uh, you can change the brightness if you need to. So you can adjust the brightness here. That actually does change the brightness. You'll see this more dramatically when you're in the night. But that's how you change the brightness. You can just switch off the display if you need to. And the home screen you can choose from uh, the zero layer or the classic. I prefer zero layer, but classic just gives you, instead of prompts or suggestions, you can just have fixed options down here and you can customize the layout if you want to. Graphic goodies I think is just cool. So on Christmas, maybe you'll get some graphics here, which is pretty cool. I like that. Units, you can change the units. So let's say you're driving in Europe, click on kilometers. And now the instrument cluster is now on kilometers. You'll always have MPH there. Legally, that has to be displayed. But if I change it to miles now, you can see now it's just MPH, MPH here, but kilometers there. So legally that has to be displayed. Language, you can change a language if you need to. And then you can change the keyboard languages here if you want to. You've got handwriting recognition if you need to. So that's pretty cool. And you can reset the dictionary if you need to. Control elements. So you can change the feedback. So if you want it to be loud, you can have it loud. Or if you don't like those that tick sound every time you select something, you can switch it off. Touch control. This just changes the control, the speed of the feel. So I would have it as medium, but some people may have it as fast. That's fine. If I click on info, you have got the manual. Now you do get a, a physical manual that's in the glove box of this car. It may be in the trunk or the boot, but you have got the manual built into the car. And here you've got, they are very generic, but you can see all the common things that most people like to find out about the car. You've got it here. And then system information, you can see what software are on, and you can see other information if you want to. Then legal, just gives you the license information. Uh, this is for your own personal reading. I'm not going to let that load because that will take forever. 
And then you've also got the phone. So I haven't connected my phone to this, but please watch that video on how to do that. And then if I go to the right, we've also got info. And here you can see uh, information on when it was driven, vehicle information. You can see where I'm steering. You can see how much accelerator and brake I'm using. Engine information you've got here as well. And this is really cool. It looks really sporty, doesn't it? Got all that information here if you want it. Very cool. Now, to use a sat nav, I should have shown you this ages ago, but I didn't. Now, to use a sat nav, you can see there's no real options here. To use sat nav, it's just nice and simple. Just go to the top here and select where to. Now, you can see the P just takes me to the local parking in my area. If I click where to, now I can set the destination. I always recommend using the postcode for wherever you're going. So if I put in the dealership uh, postcode on WV24HD, give that a click. Give it a moment and now you can see my route is set. I can set it as a favorite. I can share it if I need to. I can see what's in the vicinity. I can see what the route information is. And if I click let's go, that'll take me to my destination. You can see on the top left corner, you've got the information here on how far it is, the journey. And if I click this button, that will just mute. Please proceed to the highlighted route. And you can see it just mutes SatNav, but if I press it again. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Now, when the sat nav's talking, that's the best time to adjust the volume. So, please proceed to the. You can see, I can adjust the volume, but you have to do it quite quickly. Please proceed to the highlighted route. So, please proceed to the highlighted route. So it's not the easiest to use. When when it's talking, it's fine. It's just getting the knack please of it. Proceed to the highlighted route. So that's how you adjust the volume for the sat nav. And once you're finished, you can click the X right here and I'll end the sat nav. Now you can set favorites as well. Uh, you can set your home, your work and your favorite. Now I wouldn't actually set your home address in your sat nav only because if someone was to steal your car, they'll know where you live. And chances are you got your keys on your car key. So I would recommend not doing that. But you can add favorite places and you can just put those details in or if you've used a previous destination and you want that to be a favorite click on the three dots and now you can see you can save as a favorite you can save as a home or a work if i click on save as favorite that's now saved in my favorites if i pop into my favorites you can see it's right there and i can keep adding more and more favorites if i want to if i want to remove a favorite just click the three dots and I can delete that entry or delete all the favorites from here if I want to. Receive destination is really useful if you want to use the Mercedes Me app to use that. Points of interest, uh, the, this is actually quite useful. If you're in an area that you're not familiar with, you can see where your nearest restaurant is or hotel. You've got that information right here. Now on the top right corner, you've got the star. If you click that, you've got your favorites here as well and you can customize your favorites. Now, so you can customize your favorites and you can make it look and feel how you want it to, which is really, really useful. You can have a real good play and see what favorites you prefer to use. You got loads and loads of options here. Now I'm gonna show you the apps feature. Uh, you've got the dash cam feature as well. So you can use a dash cam, just make sure you connected a USB device to this. And then browser. Now you can hotspot off your phone and I've done a video on how to do that. So check that out in the GLC playlist. But you can hotspot your mobile phone to this car and you've got the internet to this car. And you can watch YouTube on here. Uh, I think you can watch Netflix on here as well. You can browse the internet if you want to, but I, if you're going to browse the internet, you're better off using your phone because it can be a bit slow on here. 
Let me know in the comments if you prefer to use it on here or on your phone. You've got your license info again. And then you've got the gallery as well. And this shows you any photos and videos that you've got stored here. So I've shown you what dynamic, uh, the dynamic button does. It allows you to change the dynamics of the car. This button allows you to actually see around the car, get a bird's eye view, and I've shown you what these buttons do earlier on in the video. Now if I click this button, that allows me to see some quick functions that I may need to use. So I've got access to the DSR, the acoustic warning, if I want to switch off the head-up display. Uh, you've also got the option to change manual shifting, switching off the parking sensors, and this one is a really useful feature, the interior protection. And uh, that, if you are leaving anyone in the car, make sure it's off. And now when you lock the car, the alarm won't go off when you've got people in the car. Otherwise, leave it back on if you're not gonna do that. Favorites just takes you to your main favorites. You can go into all settings if you need to from here. Very useful, very cool. Now the next thing is you've got the hazard lights, you've got your touch controller. Now first you have to get connected to Mercedes Me, which I will explain what that does a bit later on again. This button, if you press that, you've got the option to switch the display off or the system off completely. So you have got that option there if you want to do that. To switch it back on, just press that button. Now. We've also got the mute button, so if I want to put it on mute, you know, on the top left corner, a little symbol there. I can adjust the volume if I need to, using the options here. Nothing's connected, so that's why it's not on. And then you can press as well. You can swipe, you can press these buttons as well. Now, moving up, we have got some more options at the top here. Now, at the top, we have the controls for the sunroof. And what I can do is swipe like this to close the electric blind. And if I swipe like this, I'll open the electric blind. I think if I swipe again, that will open the electric blind, uh, electric panoramic sunroof, which is lovely. You can see the electric blinds come back again. So if I want full light, just press that. Swipe again, and the electric blind recedes again. If I want to close it, just swipe all the way like that. If I want to just tilt it just slightly, I can press this. That tilts open just a bit. If I want to close it, press the opposite button, and that closes. Now, passenger airbag at the moment it says off. When someone sat in the passenger seat, then that will go to on. So don't worry if that says off. Moving up, we have the lights. And you can see if you touch the lights, the lights come on. Uh, I'll go to SOS in a second. This button is useful if you don't want the lights to come on when you open the doors. I'm going to leave that on. And then we've also got this button, which puts the rear lights for rear passengers on. And then you press it again to switch it off. And then you've also got your reading lights. And if you press that, all the lights come on there, which is quite nice, convenient. Now you've got the Mercedes Me button, which is very, very useful. Now, if you press that button, we'll activate the breakdown cover. What will happen is someone speak to you through the speakers of the car. So basically Next. the car has its own SIM card. So when you press that button, uh, it'll automatically contact the breakdown cover. And someone will speak to you through speakers to ask if you're okay and what kind of response you need. Uh, if it's a breakdown, you can inform them that you've broken down or come out to you. They'll know your location because the car will send that information to them. So you don't need to know exactly where you are, which is really useful. I can do the same for the SOS feature. So you've got the SOS feature here. If you press that, press that button, that will automatically call 
the emergency services for you. When you press that, it will automatically call the emergency services for you. If you did have an emergency, someone will speak to you through the speakers to check if you're okay. If you're not, uh, they'll just send out the police, the ambulance, or the fire emergency, whichever team you need, whichever service you need. Now, if you were in an accident and the, the airbags went off, then the system will automatically do the SOS system for you. And then someone f will ask you through the speakers if you're okay. If they don't get a response from you, then they'll just send everyone out to you. And I think that's a fantastic feature. With regards to the breakdown cover, if you don't want to use the switch up there, you can ring them directly. And the number, you'll find it in the door sill. There is the breakdown recovery. Now I would actually recommend using that breakdown recovery even if you're a tire puncher. Only because if you're on the motorway, it could be a risk. Uh, I think you're breaking the law as well if you uh, try and replace the tire yourself, especially on the hard shoulder. So you are supposed to contact the breakdown recovery. Now with Mercedes, you get that complimentary for three years when from new. And as long as you get the car serviced every year, after the three years, every year you'll have that breakdown cover included up to 30 years, which is a fantastic feature to use and have. Now to get to connect to Mercedes Me, to use the app and to make sure you're connected correctly to your car. So when you do use the Mercedes Me functions at the top, what you need to do, if you bought the car new from Mercedes, they'll have automatically uh, connected your car to Mercedes Me account. But if for whatever reason you may have purchased your car through a leasing company, something like that, then you will have to go into the dealership, provide your V5 document, your registration document for the car, your driving license or a passport to just show proof that you own that car. And if you don't have those details, uh, maybe you may not have the registration record, the V5C. What you can do is let's say it is through a leasing company, contact the leasing company, get them to get you connected to Mercedes Me. And if they can't do that, that's fine. What you'll then need to do is just get them to write an email to provide proof that they are happy for you to be connected to Mercedes Me account. Uh, some leasing companies can be a bit funny only because when you hand that car back in, you'll still be connected to Mercedes Me. So you'll still be able to see where that car is. You can unlock uh, doors from the app which is quite useful in an emergency but not useful if you don't own the car. In terms of the repair puncher kit don't use that don't use a repair puncher kit again just use the Mercedes Me breakdown service either by pressing the button there or contacting the breakdown recovery uh, with the number because when you use the tire puncher repair kit that will destroy your tire and that means you will have to replace it It'll give you enough maybe miles to get to a tire repair shop, but that tire won't be repairable. So you will have to replace it. That's why I always recommend you always use the breakdown recovery provided by Mercedes Me. Now to open the bonnet, all you do, is go underneath the car and you've got the red handle there. Just pull that, give that a pull. Go to the front little lever just here just catch that open that up put your hand there and now you've got access to the engine bay and you can top up the engine oil here big fluids here got some more fluid here but this is where you're gonna probably use the washer fluid and then you have got the uh, battery here positive and negative so if you do need to charge your car, trickle charge it, you've got the options here. But realistically, you don't have to worry about this. Once you're finished, all you do is close this and use plenty of force now. So close this by plenty of force. And that's closed the bonnet for you. Like I said earlier, you don't need to worry about topping up engine oil or fluid. One of my top tips is, as long as you get your car serviced from a Mercedes-Benz dealer and then do the health checks, maybe the summer or the winter health checks, uh, that should give you enough 
wash your fluid and all the enough fluids that you need. So I always recommend doing that. I always recommend getting that, those uh, health checks done. They only take about half an hour to an hour max. Sometimes they even wash your car, which is quite convenient. I think in the UK they charge the health check for about £30, but sometimes they may do it for free. So just ask, you never know. They may do it for free, especially if they don't need to top anything up. Now I'm just going to show you some bonus features and I used the GLC SUV to show these features. There's the residual heat. So the car is switched off and now I can use the residual heat function as well. So I give that a click. Now the car will keep the car as warm as possible as long as the engine is warm enough. So that's very cool. You can hear it working now. I'll switch that off. Now I'm trying to get the head up display to work and you might be able to see it right now. Because we're on a car park, it's not showing the road, it's saying road not mapped, which is fine. And on the infotainment screen, I have some arrows telling me which way to go. Now let's show you what this looks like. You'll notice as well the head up display. If I go forward, it tells you when the car's in hold, which is quite cool. Tells you how close you're getting to the car in front, which is very useful. We've got here as well, but it's nice to have it on the head-up display as well. And then if I hold the car, yeah, I've got the hold function, as well as on the instrument cluster, I have got it here as well. That's very useful. Now, I'm going to drive. You'll be able to see what this looks like. does update here for me it's telling me I need to do that the head-up display is also telling me what I need to do sat nav now now you can see the arrows working and I also have some visual display here you can see that's very useful Got information telling me I need to take a right there also on the instrument cluster and then the head up display as well. Let me know in the comments if you found this video too long and I might make a different video which will just be a shorter video on how to use the main function so let me know in the comments please. Check out the GLC playlist for more videos related to the GLC. Some of the videos in the GLC playlist will be of the C-Class but the features will be the same so hopefully it helps you out too. There are videos on how to connect your phone to the car, how to use a self-parking feature, and even videos on how to use the cruise control and speed limiter. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe as it really helps me and the channel grow and create even more content. Please like this video. Also comment if you have any suggestions or questions. There is a new thanks feature. If you want to donate to the channel, then please feel free to use this feature and any money raised from YouTube will be used to buy more equipment. Thanks for watching.